We've scoured both nationally and internationally across different sectors and industries, looking at practices that might help us and others accelerate how we learn to improve. So one place to look is, well, how does quality improvement actually occur on the job floor in industry? Because the products we buy, you know, they actually are getting cheaper and they're getting better. How do they accomplish that? How do design firms develop new products and services that actually make people's lives better and easier? How are very large healthcare institutions becoming more safer, becoming safer and more patient-centered in the way they go about carrying out their care? And more recently, how are structured scientific networks speeding progress on problems previously thought too difficult, if not impossible, to solve? What might we learn from each of these that might give us a leg up on getting better at getting better? Culling all of this together, we call it an improvement paradigm. And this paradigm is based on six core principles. First is to be problem-centered and to see the problem through the perspective of those engaged in it. So it might be called user-centered or human-centered. Attend to variability in performance. See the system that's creating that variability in performance. Become analytical. We need to measure, and we need to engage in discipline inquiry, and then carry out this work in the context of a network community so that we can accelerate the learning to improve. Lewis is now going to actually take us in a little deeper to each of these six principles. Okay? okay. Im improvement science uh, starts with a decept deceptively simple question. What specific problem or problems are we trying to solve? And the key word is specific. We, we, typically want, we typically know what we want to happen, but we don't know how to get there. Identifying specific high leverage problems takes thoughtful analysis and hard work. When we work with groups of all sorts, you'd be amazed at the amount of time they spend trying to come to agreement on what it is they're trying to do. It means asking over and over again, why do we get the outcomes we observe? It starts by paying close attention to the work that people do and the problems they encounter as they do it. Practical, practical solutions are rarely born in the mind's eye of academics. Rather, genuine solutions are achieved by being user-centered. This means experiencing the problem yourself, the problem, and, and asking people why they do what they do. Embedded here is the grist for solving and identifying possible targets of change. For example, improving community college completion is a pressing social concern. We want to improve outcomes, but framed this way is too broad. It's not yet focused enough for us to make progress. We need to know where are the gatekeepers? What are the main blocks to student success? We need to see the problem as students experience it. This means talking to students, engaging directly with their experiences, and culling from the, existence, the existing research and case accounts and evaluation studies. In going through a process like this, a key observation came to the fore, that developmental math courses, as Tony just said, are the single biggest impediment to success. Now, when you look at developmental math, given the broad problem of community college success, which is intractable, working on developmental math is a problem we can begin to work on solving. When you think about it, it's just not possible to get a solution if you don't know the problem you want to solve. 